Hey there, scientists. Today, we are gonna start talking about the food chain. So you'll be asking yourselves, what does it eat and what eats it? Your objective today is you are going to use a food chain to describe the flow of energy from the sun through the plants and the animals in an ecosystem. Let's do this, scientists. Welcome back, scientists. I am Mr. Steyer, and this is Mr. Steyer's Classroom. Today, we are talking about the food chain. Specifically, we're going to look today at a desert food chain. Now, I know that in the past, you loved it every time I would say, photosynthesis, ah! Well, now, the next thing you're going to hear me say a lot, and you're going to fall in love with, is when we talk about a food chain, we have to ask ourselves these two questions. What does it eat and what eats it? So be ready to start thinking about those questions every time we work on this food chain from here going forward. What does it eat and what eats it? Your goal today, scientist, is you can use a food chain to describe the flow of energy from the sun through the plants and the animals in an ecosystem. Two key words that we're going to talk about today are producers and consumers. So just so we understand those two key words, a producer is an organism that makes its own food. Common producers are going to be plants. So producers, they make their own food from the sun in a process called, that's right, photosynthesis. Ah! And producers get their energy directly from the sun. Second key vocabulary word that we're going to talk about today is consumers. A consumer gets their energy by eating other organisms. So a consumer does not get their energy directly from the sun. That's a producer. Producers get their energy directly from the sun. And a consumer may have to eat that producer to get the energy. So what we're looking at here is, and I'm going to pop this thing out, is we are looking at a full-on food chain right here. So we have a food chain that starts here with sunlight, and then we have sagebrush, and there's one of those keywords, producer. We have our lubber grasshopper, which is also a consumer, or is it, I think it's lubber grasshopper. We have our Texas horned lizard, which is also a consumer and our red-shouldered hawk, which is also a consumer. And we can see here that these arrows indicate the direction in which the energy is flowing. These arrows indicate the direction in which the energy is flowing. So, the question we're trying to figure out is, how does energy flow from the sunlight to plants. And how does the energy from sunlight flow to animals? And how does the energy from sunlight flow between the animals? So how does this energy from the sun get to everything along a food chain? Now, I know that you know that chains, they have links in them, right? And the, the links, they, they all go together. And the links of a food chain or any chain is what gives it strength. So when we can link one thing to another thing, it's going to give that chain sustainability and a survival rate. So the stronger the link is, the easier it is for that thing to survive. 
So let's look at our energy right here. So a food chain is a path by which energy flows from one living thing to another environment. The photo shows an energy chain in the desert. The arrows show one way that energy moves from one living thing to another. All right, so we're gonna trace that path of energy. So here we start off, we have our sunlight. Sunlight is the source of energy for the food chain. Well, now we're gonna add our first link to our chain and add some strength. So sagebrush is a producer, which means it is a plant that can produce its own food directly from the sun. Producers use energy from sunlight to make their own food. So as long as there is sunlight and good sustainable sunlight, there is a path for that energy to travel and that makes that a strong connection because as long as there is sunlight, this producer can grow. It has the ability to transfer the energy on. Next up, we have our first consumer. Some consumers get energy by eating producers. So our lover grasshopper right here, it is going to be eating the sagebrush. So this is a consumer because it has to consume. It has to get energy from something else. Unfortunately, it can't make its own food, but that would be just crazy cool. In the videos this week, you got to check them out. There actually is some animals that can, that, that have chlorophyll in them. So they can theoretically make their own food through photosynthesis. It gets crazy interesting. All right. So we have our sunlight, source of all energy, helps the sagebrush grow. The sagebrush gets eaten by the grasshopper. So that's how the, the grasshopper gets its energy. Then we have the Texas horned lizard. So the lizard comes in as a, another consumer. The Texas horned lizard gets energy by eating the grasshopper. So the lizard eats the grasshopper, the grasshopper ate the sagebrush, the sagebrush made its own food from the sun. Oh yeah, you're right, I heard you. I heard you there with the elbows. You just said, well, if the lizard eats the Grasshopper, what eats the lizard? Brilliant. Yes, that red-shouldered hawk. So the hawk eats the lizard. The sun's energy has moved through the food chain. The hawk eats the lizard. The lizard eats the grasshopper. The grasshopper eats the sagebrush. The sagebrush made its own food from the sunlight, from the sun. So we have a producer at the very beginning and then a consumer, another consumer, and another consumer. And we can see the flow of energy through this food chain. And we asked ourselves the key questions. From a food chain, can we describe the flow of energy from the sun? And when we look at one thing, we can say, what does it eat? and what eats it. What does the sagebrush eat? Sunlight. What does the, what eats it? A grasshopper. <laughs> what eats the, what does the grasshopper eat? Sagebrush. What eats the grasshopper? Lizard. What eats the lizard, or what, what does the lizard eat? Grasshopper. What eats the lizard? Hawk. And we can follow the path of energy through that food chain. Uh, remember a producer makes its own food. A consumer has to get their energy by eating something else. So you are a consumer. I am a consumer. When you consume Doritos, you are getting your energy from Doritos. I don't know if that's a great idea, but you can, they're delicious. We all know. Okay. And you have to know the difference between a producer and a consumer. You have to know what a producer is. All right. Your job this week 
is to make certain that you can follow that path of energy. Something crucial that I want you to start thinking about like a scientist is when you see animals in your neighborhood or you see animals at school, you have to ask yourself the two questions. What does it eat and what eats it? So personal story, um, yesterday, see a giant owl in my neighborhood. So I have to ask myself, what does it eat? And what eats it? Well, there's not a lot around that it's going to eat an owl. But you know what I have noticed? There is a lot of bunnies around. And I've also noticed that this particular fall going into winter, there's not a lot of voles that I've seen in my yard. So does that mean that the owl is eating those voles because there's food around for that owl to survive? It's a curious thing. It's definitely something that I want to pay attention to over the winter to see if I can see any more activity from this owl that's living in the neighborhood. Um, it's, it's really interesting when you start to notice the animals that are living in your neighborhood because if they live there, it means that there's food there for that animal. And that also means that something lives nearby that would eat that thing. What does it eat? and what eats it. So be thinking about those questions. Um, make certain that you are paying attention to this food chain and that you can trace that flow of energy, that you know that all energy comes from the sun and flows through a food chain. Be clear on what producer and consumer mean. Thanks for being here today. I am Mr. Steyer, and this is Mr. Steyer's Classroom. I will see you on the next one. Later, scientists. Bye.